Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 10th of September 2011. We've just been through a geomagnetic storm, and solar activity has continued on a moderate level for the last 24 hours, with a couple of large flares and quite a few spectacular coronal mass ejections. But before we get into all of that, the trivia question. I'm sure you've all heard of Pandora, at least in a fictional context. Today's trivia question is, what two real objects are named Pandora? One of them was discovered 153 years ago today by George Searle. And you'll get a couple of extra bonus points if you can tell me what George Searle's middle name was. The answers will be given at the end. From a flare point of view, we've had two C flares and two M flares in the last 24 hours. All of them from Region 1283. However, Region 1289 is beginning to show signs of life, as we shall see in a minute. Currently, we have four officially numbered regions on the disk, and there are two as yet unnumbered regions that have appeared in the last 24 hours. Let's start with Region 1283 in the northwest, the one that's been giving us most of our activity. Comparing yesterday's image with today's, it looks as though the region has shrunk quite considerably and lost a number of spots, especially in the trailer. However, NOAA claims that this region has grown by 5% in the last 24 hours. I think this means that determining the area of sunspots is more of an art than a science. Next, let's take a look at Region 1287 in the southwest. According to NOAA, this region has not grown at all in the last 24 hours. And if you compare yesterday's image with today, I think you'll have to agree that they are correct in that there's not a significant change between the two days. Next, we'll take a look at Region 1289 in the northeast. According to NOAA, this region has grown by about 5% in the last 24 hours. And if you compare the images from yesterday with today, you can see that there has been quite a bit of development in the trailer part of the region. This is still a massive spot though, and it has shown some signs of life in that it's produced some of the mid-level B flares that we've had in the last 24 hours. The unnumbered region that I pointed out yesterday has been numbered overnight as Region 1290. And if you compare the pictures from yesterday to today, you can see that it has grown quite a bit overnight. However, it's still a fairly modest region, but it's worth keeping an eye on in case the growth continues. We have two unnumbered regions on the disk. One in the northern hemisphere, just ahead of region 1289, and one that's popped up behind region 1290 in the southeast. Both of these are fairly modest regions, but they're worth keeping our eyes on because they have popped up so rapidly, and might grow into a significant region as yet. We can see how rapidly these regions are growing or appearing, by looking at the sunspot and magnetic movies from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. So pick your favourite region and see how it has developed over the last 48 hours. Here I would concentrate on the appearance of these new regions rather than any of the older ones because the older ones are closer to the limb and it will be more difficult to see any development. Next we'll take a look at the transition region and lower temperature corona from the AIA instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. And here I'm pleased to see that the filament near region 1283 lifted off as I predicted several days ago. Uh, here's a before and after picture. You can see the dark line just to the east of region 1283. And then after the filament has erupted, that dark line has been replaced by a double bright ribbon, which is characteristic of a um, filament erupting. So this probably led to a coronal mass ejection, which we'll talk about in a minute. And you can see it plainly happen in the movie. And even the low temperature coronal movie shows some sign of the event as happening as well. In the high temperature coronal image from the GOES SXI instrument, you can see a beautiful coronal hole stretching almost from pole to pole. But just to the west of that, you can see this bright arcade of post fair loops, which were formed when the filament erupted. In the Soho Lasco coronagraph images, you can see some exquisite coronal mass ejections boiling off from the sun and particularly towards the end of the sequence, the coronal mass ejection that was associated with that filament eruption. We get another spectacular view of the same thing when we look at the data from the Stereo A spacecraft, which is looking at the sun from over 90 degrees ahead of the Earth. And you can see that the filament, when it lifts off, heads north. So this event is unlikely to give us a major geomagnetic storm. Next, let's take a look at the solar wind and see what happened with this geomagnetic storm. We can see that the temperature shown here in green made a sudden jump to nearly a million degrees. At the same time, the speed of the solar wind increased to over 600 kilometers per second, and the density remained relatively high, reaching a peak of over 30 protons per cubic centimeter. That's nearly 300 times more dense than it was just yesterday. Here's a three-dimensional model of what happened to our magnetosphere 
as the uh, coronal mass ejection hit. As the interplanetary shock hits the magnetosphere, it compresses. And then as the different uh, temperatures and densities um, and velocities fluctuate, so does the magnetosphere in concert with it. In the meantime, the high energy electron flux goes from a high level to a very low level and then starts to fluctuate wildly. And we still have some remnants of the uh, proton events from the X flares themselves. Both the Arctic and Antarctic auroral zones look very, very uh, active. And we've got some of the first pictures here of some of the uh, aurora that were seen as a result of this event. The KP index has varied between 0 and 7 over the last 24 hours, but now seems to be dropping off and is at level 4. So in summary then, the X-ray background is at the B4 level, the sunspot number has risen to 65, radio sun intensity is at 112 solar flux units, solar wind speed is now at 530 kilometers per second, with a density of about 5 protons per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are rated as unsettled. My forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares are likely, M and X flares are possible, sunspot number will probably go higher, coronal mass ejections are likely, so the wind speed will remain high and a geomagnetic storm is still possible. From the composite coronal image we can see that there's a large region about to come over the northeast limb and then a smaller one to come over the southeast limb and we should start seeing the first indications of those tomorrow. And now for the answers to the trivia question. There are two objects in the solar system called Pandora. One was discovered in 1858 by George Searle whose middle name was Mary and is an asteroid. The second one is a moon of Saturn and was discovered by Voyager 1 in 1980. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.